This is a presentation on the new features within AlphaCam 2016 R1. This presentation will look at some general enhancements that we've made. Firstly, we've introduced a new nesting special function called Roll Split. There are many customers out there using knife cutting machines that would have a long roll of material that they want to nest all of their parts into, but their machine actually only has a specific working area. So what we can do is Using the configure option, we can configure the optimum and minimum sheet widths. And then what nesting will do is it will take a large sheet and then using the configurations that we've made, it will split it out into separate sheets for the post processor to then output these separate programs. We've also made some modifications to the advanced 5-axis engine. Previously, when you defined a tool holder, you could only have a simple tool holder as specified in the advanced 5-axis engine. Well, we've had the facility to have solid tool holders within the software for a couple of versions now, but we couldn't attribute those to the advanced 5-axis engine. Well, we've introduced that for this version, so we now get full collision detection for solid tool holders. We've also improved the machining styles support. In the previous versions, if you'd saved Advanced 5 Axis as a machining style, it would always re-display the machining dialog. Well, what we've done now is if we have surfaces on a drive surfaces user layer, then the Advanced 5 Axis machining style will pick up on that and apply it without displaying the dialog again. We've also made a couple of additions to the Query Manager. Before we used to have a, a field called is inside another, but that was a little bit limited if you had several geometries inside another. So we've now added a new field of is inside how many, and we'll see how that works in a minute as well. We've also added the option to add create a layer on the fly, whereas before we always had to have the layer existing and then import it from another drawing or another query, whereas now you can actually create the layer on as you're working on it. Also, when you have solid models in the drawing, we now have the option to display some properties relating to the solid model, just to give the user that a little bit more information. Along a similar lines, now when you input CAD of STL and SketchUp files, instead of in the STL window it just displaying the STL and then a number, it will now actually maintain the name of the STL file. We've also made a slight adjustment to the way the cut with disk option works in our Stone software. We have now have this option, as we can see here, Trim Paths to XZ Plane. And what we're looking at doing here is if we see the edges of the tool paths, we're looking to restrict the surface rollover, so we're just tidying up these edges here. So let's go and look at these features now within AlphaCam 2016 R1. I have a geometry on screen that is going to represent my big long roll of material. Let's start by loading a nest list of my collection of parts. Here we have our parts now that we're going to nest. So let's go ahead and nest these into the big long sheet. We say OK to this, accept all the values, and we'll see how the nesting would just run it into one big long roll. And that's fine if we have a setup that can manage this big long roll, but what we actually want is nesting to split this up into manageable sheet or frame sizes for us. So let's just undo that and see how roll split affects this. So once again we'll nest again. This time we'll come in and we'll activate roll split. And you can now see the configure button becomes available to me and here I can specify my optimum sheet width and my minimum sheet width. So let's say OK to this and we'll now see the nesting process it into the small sheets. And it will also give us the main sheets as well. And what we can see here is we have our parts and here 
is a representation of it in the actual frame size and if a part is too big for the frame it will chop it and then basically finish that off on as it were the next sheet. Now what you have to remember is the roll of material on the machine is continuous it's just you have these different size sheets for the different size frame the material would roll the size of the frame and then start cutting the next the continuation of the part. So this is what roll split can do for us. Before we look at the 2016 version of applying the advanced 5-axis machining styles, let's look at how it used to work in 2015 R2. Let's go and create a layer for the style and let's make that active and then we'll get the surfaces from faces same color faces finish so I now have my surfaces on my drive surfaces user layer now let's go to our machining style and we can see that we have the layer for geometries associated to drive surfaces so let's go and apply the style but you see the dialog is displayed now I have to pick the drive surfaces and then I can say OK and the machining is applied. So this is great but the dialog has to keep being displayed and we, we have already entered the information so if possible we don't really want to see that. So let's go and look at this now in 2016 R1. I have my part open in 2016 R1 so let's go and create the user layer again and go and make that active and then extract our surfaces. So I now have my drive surfaces on the drive surfaces user layer. Let's go to my machining style, apply it we can see it's applied straight away without displaying the dialog box again. But what we now have is if we run the simulation we can see we have our solid tool holder and that looks great except for the fact that it's going straight through our job. Well when we apply the five axis tool paths they are always going to keep the tool normal to the surface so now what we need to do is introduce the gouge detection with the tool holder course the problem in the past was if we had our solid tool holder we didn't have those options. Let's stop the simulation and we'll go and modify our machining to introduce the gouge check. So straight to the gouge check tab there's no reason to change any of the settings because I'm happy with those and I'm going to introduce a check against the arbor and the holder. I'm not going to retract the tool I want to tilt the tool and I'm going to use my lead lag angles this time. So let's go and pick our check surfaces. These are the areas that we want the tool holder to be checking for collisions against. Say finish and then we'll say OK and let it reevaluate the tool path. Now when we run the simulation we can see that our tool holder is moving, tilting, but now if we look from the end we can see that we are not colliding with the part anymore. Let's start by looking at the part and feature extract and apply the machining before we use any geometry queries. So if I go up to solid model extract, automatic extraction, I'm not going to extract any drillable holes, just contours. Let's say OK to that. We can see it's feature extracted our part quite nicely. So let's go to our machining styles. Let's find my predefined machining style and apply that to all geometries. And I can see I get my machining, but whilst it's nice to be pocketing this area, I don't really want to pocket all this internal area here, where I can just do a rough finish pass once around here, or maybe twice, um, without having to reduce all this material to waste. Sometimes it might be nice to reduce it all to, to dust, but um, in this instance, I just want to do one cut so I don't want to have it on the pocketing area. Let's undo that and what we really want to have now is a geometry query just to take this internal 
cut and rather than having it on the pocketing layer or open areas is to move it to a separate area that we can apply the machining to. For example I could put it on the outlines the same as the outside cut but if I was doing the outside cut in one and maybe wanted to do this internal on two then maybe putting it on a layer called aperture might be nicer and then hitting it with a separate machining style. So let's look at edit, um, creating a geometry query now to do that for us. So if I go to edit and go new query, I obviously have these fields that I can apply to and what I want to be looking at is firstly if it's gone onto the open areas layer let's look on just the open areas layer rather than analyzing all of the geometry. So I can pick my field drop down and I'm looking here for layer name. I can then type in the value field open areas. So it's only going to be analyzing geometries on the open areas. I now want to have another field in here because I want to check the against the is inside how many field. I need to right click and go insert clause. That's added the and and now I can click inside here and pick inside how many and I want to test against being inside three other geometries. Then the result will be a user layer. Well I haven't got any of my user layers listed in here. Once again we could import from active drawing, save drawing, templates or from another query but we now have add a new layer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a layer and I'm going to call it aperture. And we can assign a color to it. Uh, maybe a color we haven't used yet. And say OK. And now that's in my list. I can select it. It's now going to go on our aperture user layer. So I can click run to that. And what we'll now see is this internal geometry here has gone on the aperture user layer. And now when I run my machining style, let's save the query first because we're going to come back and use that. And now when I apply to the selected geometries, it's now gone and applied just a single pass around there, which is perfect, just what I required. And now I can adjust that machining style individually for working on that. Now the nice thing with queries is if I just go back to my original drawing, I can now go to my feature extraction and on the contours if we go in and actually look at the contours tab we can run a query on results you can browse for your query select it and then say OK and it will automatically extract and run the query at the same time to save you having to run it separately and you can then just come in with your machining style and machine the part. I have my collection of solids on screen, obviously you could just have one solid if you wish. And I can see here in the project manager tree how they're all obviously labelled and when we click on them they're indicated. Now what I can do is right click on one of these and go to properties and it will now display some pertinent properties relating to the part size, the part name, when it was modified etc. So we're now displaying some details about the solids. If I'm not sure obviously where it is and I have a vast list of parts, I can click on the binoculars here to go and find the particular solid I'm interested in. It will then be highlighted in the project manager tree and the details displayed on it. Let's go and open now a Google SketchUp file. We can see what the file is actually called and if we open it, set the settings brings it in and if we now look at the STL because all SketchUp files are imported as STL we can see that there are two actual separate parts we can see the properties for each of the parts and we now see they are maintaining the file name. Now we're going to look at one of the new features that we've applied into our stone module. So we're going to apply some machining to this part so I'm going to activate a work plane and I'm now going to use a machining style to apply the machining that I require. We can obviously see we have a, a finished tool path that's doing the job. But we have these jagged edges, if you like, where the part is rolling over. If we look from the front, we can see running the simulation how the part is 
or the disc tool is rolling over the side not so much at the, at the uh, front of the job but as we move further down it it starts to roll over more and more we just want to restrict that slightly whilst it's machining the part it's just going a little bit too low down in Z so I'm just going to want to have some control to that tidy up my tool paths we have this option in here if I edit the job and trim paths to XZ plane so I'm going to enter a value in there of 125 it is the position from the local work plane origin we say OK to that it's going to regenerate the tool path and we can see how tidied up this is now and if we run the simulation again we can now see that our tool paths are a lot tidier and now the tool isn't going any lower than the position that I've specified so it's just restricting the rollover on the machining